You play a ditz on two shows. <laughs> what do you know? But different, very different shades of ditz. So, um, is she fat? <laughs> Not from where I was standing. <laughs> where were you standing? <laughs> Mostly probably people pity me and they think she's really like that. Oh, poor thing. Is he doing that again? <laughs> Ursula, the waitress from hell and mad about you, crosses over to visit friends this week, hey. playing Phoebe's estranged twin oh. sister, and in the process catches yeah. Joey's eye. I got to uh, do like a Patty Duke thing where I was... <laughs> <laughs> With split screen camera, so I was me and then me. So, uh huh. Got my sister to be the other side of me, the back of my head. We look exactly alike. My sister, my real sister. In real so life. your real sister is Ursula. She's Ursula or Phoebe. Like it's me. You you only see me. Do you want some chicken? <laughs> No, no, no food with a face. You've become so popular playing these women of no substance. <laughs> One day, would you like to take on a more intellectual role? Oh, I'd love to. I think that would be fun. I mean, I'd love to do anything different from what I'm doing. Anyway, not because I don't like what I'm doing, but just, you know, that's what I do. Lisa Kudrow in 1995 on her double life as a ditzy waitress on Mad About You and ditzy massage therapist and folk singer on Friends. In real life, Kudrow is no ditz. She was a Vassar College biology major set to follow her father into medical research until she got bit by the acting bug. Today's Matt Lauer had a chat with Kudrow in 1996. All right, let's just get it over with, okay? The last time we talked, mm -hmm. I made a mistake. Uh, you didn't make a mistake. I called Phoebe the D word. Dumb. Like five times. You just wouldn't have it any other way. I guess I was trying to get you to admit it, but you obviously don't feel that, so give me a word so that from now on when I see you on the street, I'll go, remember, she's... I don't know. It's a... Sweet. She's, yeah. She's Phoebe. Yeah, okay. Why can't she just have her own adjective? Come on, what is this, 1922? <laughs> What's 1922? Just, you know, a long time ago. <laughs> You know what the thing is? I've, I've thought about it. I think my problem is, it's like someone in your family. I'm allowed to complain about her, but you're not. <laughs> so, okay. It's as if, like, I'm allowed to say she's dumb, but you can't. Oh, the cow in the meadow goes moo. Oh, the cow in the meadow goes moo. Then the farmer hits him on the head and grinds him up, and that's how we get hamburgers. Here's the thing I'm going to talk about that's going to be our bone of contention for this little sit-down. Okay? All right, I'm ready. You're singing. Yeah. <laughs> Would you rate yourself? Now, you're a great actress. So my question is, when Phoebe sings, could Lisa Kudrow do better than that? Why would she need to? Okay, let me come from another angle here. All right. Phoebe can't carry a tune in a bucket. Whoa! Lisa, can she sing? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was doing such a good job of acting. You probably thought I was really upset. I defy you to find someone who will be able to say a line like Lisa Kudrow. She's completely unique. See, I can be a waitress. I can be a waitress. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. See, Phoebe, Phoebe. Really, Phoebe? Because, you know, you'd have to be an actual waitress. This can't be like your I can be a bear cub thing. I can be a waitress. Okay, watch this. Um, give me two number ones, 86 of bacon, one Adam and Eve on a raft, and wreck them. Lisa Kudrow is uh, one of the few people on the face of the planet that uh, I have no idea what's going to come out of her mouth from one minute to the next. What would happen if one member of the Friends Ensemble cast decided to leave? I think the scary thing is, <laughs> if one person leaves, there's still a show. I mean, well, here's the thing, it works both ways. Because it's an ensemble, you're not, everyone's not totally invested in one person, which represents the entire show. So that's what I mean. The whole thing doesn't have to fall apart. But as an ensemble, the six of us have a lot more power than one, one star of the show does. Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? And as one of those six, Kudrow has made a splash playing Phoebe. Call her vocally challenged, even tone deaf. Just don't call her dumb. But are we friends again? <laughs> I don't know. I have to think about it. <laughs> Let's just say it's water under the bridge. It's under the bridge. We have a it's new flushed. beginning. It's gone.
That's nice. Thank the water, you. The, the bad water has been flushed, and it's in the Santa Monica Ocean now. So. Okay, good. Santa better. Monica Ocean, as opposed to the, the Pacific, Pacific Ocean. Ocean. <laughs> Coming up next, pal Joey, friend star Matt LeBlanc. Today we talk with Matt LeBlanc, better known as Joey, who seems to be tailor-made for the role. Hey, anybody know a good tailor? You need some clothes altered? No, no, I'm just looking for a man to draw on me with chalk. <laughs> Don't you go see Frankie. My family's been going to him forever. He did my first suit when I was 15. No, wait, 16. No, excuse me, 15. All right, when was 1990? We talked, I think it was about a year and a half ago. Yeah. The show was just starting to go, and you said to me in the interview, you said, well, you know, I think things look okay. It could be around for a while. <laughs> this has been some year and a half. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been quite a ride. We, but it's still, you know, as big as the show's gotten, it's still the six of us and the great communication we have with our writers and producers and this intimate show that we make. Before Friends shoved him into the spotlight, LeBlanc kicked around in various commercials, including an award-winning spot for Heinz Ketchup. Hot dog, please. Must you don't add what? No, thanks. I got it covered. After roles in a number of unsuccessful sitcoms, LeBlanc finally found his mark with Joey, a mostly out-of-work actor who has to settle for work as a model. You know, you rehearse it all week, you put it up on its feet, and you just can't get through it without cracking up. Why do you get to keep the table? <laughs> all right, I'll tell you what. I'll play you for it. Your little men are going to get scored on more times than your sister. Whoa, 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 whoa. Which sister? We've found kind of a neat little thing going, Maddie and I, Joey and Chandler, and it's uh, the cheap way to see, it's like the odd couple thing, a roommate, whatever, but it, whatever it is, it's working, and we really look forward to having scenes together. LeBlanc has used his role on Friends to launch a film career, starring in the recently released Ed. That was a lot of fun, I had a great time doing that, but when that was over, I could not wait to come back to work. I mean, I, I love these people, they're all so fun to be around, and I care about them all. I care about each one of them as an individual as well as as a group. That was 1996. Two years later, Matt LeBlanc was back on the big screen as Major Don West in Lost in Space, a TV star in a movie that was a remake of a TV show, and the movie that finally bumped Titanic out of first place. Listen, Doc, I'm, uh, I'm thinking this is your basic kiss for luck occasion. Wouldn't you agree? It's not really your strong suit, is it? <laughs> and Matt LeBlanc joins us this morning. Thanks very much for being with us. Good to be here. All right, looking at those two scenes right next to each other makes you wonder how much Major Don West is like the character of Joey that we've all come to know and love on Friends. Joey's a, Joey's a much more reactive kind of guy, sort of, sort of uh, plays the hand he's dealt, and I think Don West is much uh, much more proactive. He sort of makes makes things happen and uh, much smarter. And you know they have very different jobs, very very different. In the opening weekend, Lost in Space, I guess you could say, sunk Titanic. Congratulations, major accomplishment there. Thanks. Yeah, it's um, everyone involved in the film is really proud of it. Everyone worked really hard. The crew, I think, was a total of fifteen hundred people or something. Really, just a huge production. And. Um, I think it came out really well. Matt LeBlanc on his role in Lost in Space. That's five friends down and one to go. You're supposed to be a psychiatrist. I am a social worker, oh, Constance. Oh, will you just let me read my damn life? Read my lips. George is G-A-Y. Gay. I know you've been quoted as saying a lot of people are out there sharpening their knives. Do you feel like the public doesn't give you all the cast of friends? a fair shake when you try to jump from the small screen to the big screen? Does it frustrate you? Well, it's fr sure, it, it's frustrating, but you also, and you also have to sort of come to the realization that it's a media, it's an angle, it's a writing, it's something to write about, you know, to sort of have these 
actors that have a, are on this show that's a success, and then all of a sudden they're going to try to do a you know have a movie career. It's sort of who do they think they are? Who do they think they are? You know, we've heard keep your day jobs, all that sort of stuff. And if we weren't actors on a, on a television show, we would we would just be actors uh, who got a shot at at a movie, which is like what everybody wants, you know. And um, sometimes you're going to fail, and sometimes it's not going to be great, but you need to have those sort of have those experiences. Jennifer Aniston on her role in The Object of My Affection, another effort to parlay TV success into film stardom. So far, audiences are more interested in her as Rachel on Friends and in Rachel's romance with Ross. Ross's crush on Rachel dates back to their high school days. Rachel, here comes your knight in shining. Oh, no. But something has always seemed to keep them apart. Oh, dear. Kitty. There was Rachel's friend, Paolo. Hi. Wanna see her? Wow. Then, Ross's friend, Julie. Uh, Julie, this is Rachel. Hi. Later, a locked door. Try the bottom one. <laughs> Finally, a glimmer of hope. <laughs> And at last, the magic moment. For one reason or another, the country has a collective crush on Jennifer Aniston. Maybe because she's so kind and giving. Or maybe it's just the hair. So I'm looking at it. <laughs> You're scared. No, I'm looking at it. And don't oh. get me wrong, it's lovely. But it's a haircut. What's the big deal? What? I right? mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, have you ever, do you look? I feel like we're, we're like kidding everybody. In malls across the country, girls are walking into their hairdressers and saying, that's the look I want. But in, in reality, it's flattering. It's flattering, but you know what? You start to, there's definitely a part of you that says, hmm, why am I getting noticed for my haircut and not for my work? Courtney Cox said that Jennifer and Rachel are a little bit similar because they both can be distracted. I'm distracted. I, not distracted. I just think, I go into my head. People make fun of me because I'm mad. I'm always makes fun of me because I go off and I'll go into the zone. Before Friends, it was her career that was off in a zone in a series of highly unsuccessful sitcoms, including Ferris Bueller. So, um, Ferris, do you think you could, like, forget everything bad I ever did to you and introduce me to Larry? They've all gotten on the air except for one, Pilot. But they'll last maybe six episodes. 13 episodes. I think the most I did was 19 episodes of a show. And then they never, they're never heard of. Nobody knows about them. And you think, that's sort of sad, but there's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. And here's my reason. Mark? Aniston says when she first walked in with her five new co-stars, she knew this time would be different. When I met these actors, it was just, you, know, just, you just thought, this is, this is a good thing. This is a good one. These act, this, this combination of people, this, this uh, you know, mix works really, really well, and I think, uh, I think people will like it. People did like it, of course. From the beginning, Friends attracted an audience in large part because the cast had real chemistry. It's easy to believe that even when the cameras aren't rolling, the six stars of Friends were friends. That's time and again for now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jane Pauley, and we're history.